this is lesson three and first of all like we did last time we're just going to jog our memories and see whether we can remember anything from last time or how much we can remember from last time so again i've got three questions um you can choose to write these down in the backs of your books on a piece of scrap paper or maybe just say them out loud as i go through them but those three questions just to jog our memory of what we did last time are what are the different land uses within the broads now there are lots of them so if you can name several that would be great as many as you can would be excellent question two how many broads are there again have a look um, at what you wrote down last lesson just jog your memory and then the third one uh, this is probably less of a definitive black and white answer for this one, but what makes a good annotation? So remember last time, that's what we were doing. We we're annotating that sketch that we have there on the left of the screen. And you were encouraged when you did that to not just label things with one or two words, but to actually include what we call specific detail. And we highlighted specific detail in our information grid that we were given last lesson. And we use those specific details to add quality and um, more detail to the annotations that we added onto that um, that sketch. Okay, so today's title is there at the top of the page. Again, can you please add that to your page? The Broads in Numbers, and can you also make sure that that is then underlined? Like last lesson and the one before and all of the other lessons, we are going to have three different lesson objectives today. And these lesson objectives, firstly, we're going to be examining the value of tourism to the broads. So we've mentioned this a few times. We've touched upon it a couple of times previously that the broads is really a very, very popular place for people to go and visit. 7.5 million people visit the broads every year. And therefore, lots of businesses here and lots of jobs are based around this industry of tourism. So tourism is really important to this area. And we're going to physically try to work out, looking at some actual real data, just how important tourism is to the broads. When you have data, then one of the things that's important is to be able to interpret it or analyze it properly or accurately and to use it. So we're gonna try and interpret and analyze the data that we are given. That's our second challenge. And then thirdly, one of the things that we can do in the modern age is present data in all sorts of different formats. So today we're gonna to be experimenting with something called GIS or Geographical Information Systems. And we're gonna be using the data that we're interpreting and we're gonna map that data on an actual map of the broads. So that's all coming up. On the screen here to get us started is a question that most of us are probably pretty confident answering. Most of us have a confident idea in our head about what a tourist is. But actually with many things, it's then much more difficult to define that thing and to write it down as an actual definition or an explanation. So this word tourism and tourists we're familiar with so hopefully we should have an idea about how we might define that term so i'm going to ask you to do that to start off with as your first challenge and also limit you to 20 words to define the term tourist so write the word tourist and then a little dash and next to it in less than 20 words not just one word but you know 15 16 17 something like that in less than 20 words, try to come up with a simple description or definition for what we mean by the term tourist. You can pause me now. When you're ready, press play again. Okay. Here we go. This is a definition that you could choose to use. Have a read of yours. Does it kind of fit along with the one that we've got here? Um, it's quite complicated. Sometimes it's quite difficult writing definitions. But in terms of what we mean by a tourist, a tourist is a person who is generally visiting a place because they want to, for pleasure, not just for business or not because they've been told to, but they're doing it for pleasure, often on their holidays. And you're a tourist in somewhere which is away from your local area. Now, there are 
kind of more details you could go into that you might think about well, how far away do you need to be going to become a tourist is five miles away away from your local area well don't worry about that just now that's something that perhaps is is a debate for another time but this is a, a definition that we can kind of simplistically use to get our heads around what we mean by a tourist so someone who is visiting a place for pleasure who is in a place that they don't live in and is away from their normal locality that's what we mean So I'm just going to read through the bits of information that we've got at the top of the page here. But again, I'm going to use this as the time to prompt you to um, print off and access the worksheets for today's lesson. The first one should look like this. And those worksheets are under the, the name The Value of Tourism to the Broads. Um, if you can print those off and have this one in front of you. So it's important, I think, for me just to kind of go over the text that you've got on the top of that sheet, but also appears twice here on this screen, at the top of the screen as well. It says tourism is hugely important to the broads, but measuring specifically just how important can be discovered only by considering actual tourist data. Because we could all, always all say oh, tourism is important to the broad, really important. But actually, unless you've got some weight and some evidence to back up a statement like that it's a bit it's a bit vague so generally where we can we try to use data and evidence to really justify and support statements that we make so we're saying that tourism yeah is really important to the broads but we're actually going to say specifically how important it is by backing it up with some data and some evidence now, we can get this evidence and data from the Broads Authority, and we've mentioned previously, and we'll talk about the Broads Authority in, in the next lesson as well. But these are the organisation who oversee and effectively manage the National Park, the Broads National Park. Now, it's part of their job to kind of keep a tab on data and numbers of visitors and um, comings and goings within the park. And every several years, they complete a very big survey they call it a steam report an s-t-e-a-m report and they produce this data which gives lots of information and a lot of it about tourism the latest report that they did was gathered from data collected between the years of 2009 to 2017 so eight years worth of data and the data that they collected has been summarized by the worksheet that you have now got in front of you. They actually produce a big, um, several, you know, many pages of reports um, of this STEAM data. And uh, we've extracted the bits that are gonna be relevant to today's lesson and summarized it in this document that you have now in front of you. So you have now got this sheet in front of you and you will see that there's a number of things that you will be asked to do. In those boxes on the bottom half of the sheet, there are spaces for you to answer and write in your answers to those questions there. Now, maths in geography is increasingly important at GCSE and at A-level. So while we're studying geography in Key Stage 3, it's important that we get familiar with some particular terms and words. Now, some of the maths words that you'll probably already be familiar with, um, but we definitely need to know in geography, are shown on the screen here. The task that I'm going to ask you to do is to analyse the data that you have been given on that sheet and the three graphs that are displayed in the middle of the page as well. And then read the questions below where it says analysing this data and you have that grid there. Read the questions in there and then add in your answers into those spaces. Now, just so you have got a reminder, I'm going to leave that grid on the screen here that says these are some of the key terms. We have the word trend, mean, anomaly and range all defined there. So when you come across the questions that are asking you about those words, there's a little definition there which might help you. So good luck with those. You can press pause on me and restart when you're ready to go. Okay, so you'll notice that at the bottom of the screen, we have had a couple of extra stretch questions pop up. The first one says, how useful is the data? And what are some of the limitations? Now, limitations is a word that we use a lot at GCSE, in particular, A-level geography. When we talk about limitations, we're talking about 
things like what are the, the limits or the problems? What are, might be some of the issues about this data? Is it telling us everything? Is it completely reliable? Is it completely accurate? So this data is useful, but it might be more useful if we had this, this and this. So think about what else you might want in terms of data to give you more knowledge about tourism in the broads. So this data that we've got is OK, it's good, it's useful. But what are some of the limitations to it? What are some of the things that you actually think and that could be better or we could have more of this or, or that might not be so reliable? Secondly, there's another question here, which is quite topical. How may the coronavirus outbreak in 2020 affect these figures? So think about that. During the coronavirus outbreak in 2020, there was a significant period of lockdown. During lockdown, tourist areas in particular were very affected. And we had lots of businesses, cafes and hotels that were affected by um, trying to reduce the amount of um, contact that people had with each other and so they had to um, kind of impose social distancing measures and they had to reduce the amount of people that various venues could hold and shops and offices could have in them so that would have had an impact on things like tour boats for instance or hotels or cafes and, and pubs i'm not going to say any more because that's giving me away the giving away the answer but think about how something like that a global pandemic could impact a tourist area like the Broads. OK, so these two chaps are two of the Broads Authority Rangers and they make up a, a bigger team. And part of their job is to complete something which you might fancy yourselves, um, a very nice project. They do a boat census survey every four years. And by that, we mean that they actually literally count boats passing a given spot in lots of different locations around the broads. They try to do it um, in lots of different locations, but as close to the same time as, as each other. So they, they normally take a, a, a block of, of days, consistent days, um, normally when the weather is set to be the same. And uh, the last time that they did this was in 2018. And over three consecutive days, a team of broads rangers went out counted boats in lots of different locations and the idea behind this is to get a picture of where the busiest areas are where the quietest areas are the type of boats that are in the broads or the ty other types of vessels that are used in the broads not necessarily always boats now that data that these rangers gather is really interesting it's really useful and it's what we are going to interpret later on so there were a team of three Oh, sorry, they're a team of 63 people and over three days at 14 different locations, they recorded the boat movements on the broads and these were the results. OK, so you have got a grid jam packed with data there and on the left, you've got a map that shows the 14 locations where those rangers stood and, and went and conducted their surveys and their counting. Now, that's all right, and that's how the results and the locations appear in the um, the report that was then pieced together after these surveys had been done. Now, we mentioned earlier about this word limitations, and we we're talking about trying to kind of consider how useful something is and perhaps how something might be made better. Well, the data that we've got here is quite general and in the grid in particular the only link we've really got of those numbers to the names is the map that we've got on the left hand side there but it's going to take us quite a bit of time to interpret all of those numbers to actually work out where the busiest places and the quietest places are so at this point that data that was collected hasn't really been presented. It hasn't been displayed. It's just in a grid. Yes, we've got a map, but that map isn't actually showing us any data. All it's doing is showing us where those rangers collected their data from. So what we're going to try and do is merge the two together, put the data onto the map, and then all of a sudden we've got much more useful data because we can see where it's been collected from and we can see in that location, how many of all those different types of vessels there were.
Now we call this geolocated data and you can add geolocated data to anywhere as long as you have the latitude and longitude coordinates of the place where you gathered your data from. So we're going to do that and we're going to create our own what's called GIS maps. So this is a term that we used last lesson, GIS. Uh, GIS stands for Geographical Information Systems and it is becoming increasingly important to geography. And it's something at A-level in particular that examiners are expecting students to include when they're completing their own fieldwork investigations. So as I said earlier, we could make better use of this data by presenting this data in a GIS format or a GIS map. So at this stage, I'm just going to summarise the type of vessels that those rangers were counting and, and, and looking for. So they had 10 categories, um, passenger vessels, motor cruisers, sea going cruisers, day boats, sailing boats, rowing boats, canoes and kayaks, paddle boards and other. So anything that didn't then fit into those categories was just classed as other. And you'll see in your grid then that they are making their way along the top. Um, they are in, in the, the, uh, the columns at the top and underneath those columns are the actual figures for how many of those different types of boats were seen at each of those 14 different locations. So what I would like you to do is to either download the Excel spreadsheet, which is in the folder for this lesson two, or oh, sorry, lesson three, or to actually type the file that you have on your worksheet up and put it into an Excel format. So if you were to open Excel, what I would like you to do is to make a copy of the grid that you have got on the worksheet in front of you. You don't have to do that if you are able to access the, um, the Excel file which is attached um, to this lesson. When you have got that file completed and looking like it does on the top half of this screen here, what you need to make sure that you do is to save that file. Now, when you save it, you need to save it as a CSV format. So save it in that format, CSV, and save it somewhere where you can see it. So it might be useful actually to save it on your desktop, somewhere that is easily accessible. That's step one. Step two, what I'd like you to do is to launch the internet and to type in the word ArcGIS, and you can put .com afterwards, the first website that will come up will be called ArcGIS Online. Click on that and this will be the page that you are greeted with. On the top toolbar along the top of the screen, you'll see lots of different words. One of those words will be the word map. Click on that and that then when the page loads will take you to a page that looks like this. Great. Get to that stage and we're doing well. Step three. What I'd like you to do is just kind of minimize your screen a little bit so you can see your desktop and you can also see the internet page that you've just opened. Find the Excel file that you saved earlier, click on it and then hold and drag it onto the web page that you've just opened. So literally drag it from your desktop and drop it onto that map on the web page of the ArcGIS browser that you've just opened. Then cross your fingers and hope that the magic happens. And it should, because after a second or two, you'll find that the data then is processed and the data that you've added in from the boat survey will then start to be presented. And the numbers of the vessels that you have added in will be shown on the map here by what we call proportional symbols. On the left hand side of the screen, you'll be able to change between the different data that is shown. So the first one that is shown will probably just be um, the first column that you put into um, into your, your spreadsheet. You can change them between the different things. So you can look at paddle borders, you can look at kayaks, you can look at the day boats, etc. You will also find on the left hand side of the screen lots of different um, kind of attributes that you can play around with. So you can change the shape of those symbols. So you can change the size of them, the color. You can even have symbols to represent the different um, numbers that you've got as well. You can change the base map also in which your data is displayed upon. So have a little fiddle around. That's what I'm suggesting here 
on stage four. So explore the functions on the toolbar to display different data sets on a variety of different base maps and in different ways. OK, so have a little play around of it and you'll be able to see that you can do things like heat maps and uh, certainly change the different base maps that you have to. OK, <laughs> bit of a delay here. Step five. Now that you have got your map and you've fixed one that you are happy with, what I would like you to do is to press print screen on your keyboard and to copy and paste that image into a Word document, then crop that image. So you've just literally got your um, your map. And then you can then copy that then into a new Word document, add a title like I've done here. So it says mapping boat data in the broads using GIS. And I've cropped, copied and pasted the map that I created for the paddle boarding numbers. So if you do the same, you'd have one that looks something similar like that. Make sure you take the key as well. You can see on the left hand side of the screen on my map there that I have got the key. And that tells me what each of the different proportions represent. And then below the map that I paste into my Word document, I've left space for four different things. So you can see on the instructions on the right hand side of the screen here, it says print screen any one of the maps that you have created. Copy and paste it into Word, crop the image, add a title. And then crucially, this is the harder part, analyze what your map shows. Now, you could choose to cover anything, but the four things suggested below are quite a good idea. So it could be that from your map, by looking at it, that you can pick out the most popular or the busiest location, which will be shown by the biggest bubble or the biggest symbol, whatever it is that you've chosen. The quietest location will have the smallest symbol. So again, use specific place names to say Roxham, for instance, was the busiest location in terms of paddleboarding use. Um, Beckles was the quietest area in terms of paddleboarding use with the lowest amount of paddleboards recorded. The other thing that you could also pick out is the overall trend or pattern. So for instance, are there generally more vessels in the north of the broads and you know, top of the picture? Or are there more on the south? Are there more towards the coast? Does it get less as they go inland? So pick out general trends or patterns. There might not be any that are obvious. And again, you could say that if that's the case. And finally, how do these results compare to the other vessel groups. So if we're saying that the paddle boarding here, for instance, there's more of them in the north of the broads, is that the same of all of the other vessels? So you might need to go back at some of the other maps and have a look at the other maps and say, even though paddle boarding is more popular in the north of the broads, actually my results have shown that largely there are more vessels in the south. So try to interpret the results that you've got. When you've done that and you've either completed the four boxes that I've shown as an example here, or you've just done four separate bullet point answers, print your page and you'll end up with something really, really modern and very high level in terms of geography presentation. If you can master these skills at key stage three, it's fantastic because these are the skills that really impress A-level examiners. So hopefully you've been able to print out your completed GIS map and um, you'll have a good idea now of how boats and vessel numbers vary across the boards. So we have created there a very modern format of geography data presentation. And we call that, as I've said uh, several times, this is a GIS map. So in this lesson, we have examined the value of tourism to the broads. So you looked at the data on that mathematical sheet um, initially, and we worked out that broads and uh, the broads are, are really seriously dependent on tourism and creates lots of jobs, brings lots of money into the local area. We then analysed real data that was collected by the Broads Authority Rangers to work out where the busiest and least busy places in regards vessels in the board, broads are. And then we used that data in a modern way to produce the um, maps using ArcGIS and a GIS format. So to finish off with again, we're just gonna set uh, a couple of quick challenges. Challenge one, how many tourists does the Broads normally receive each year? 
and how much do they spend? Have a little look through your notes if you have to. Challenge two, what does GIS stand for and why is it great? And challenge three, specifically, which part of the broads is busiest with boats? All right, well done again today and I will see you again for the next lesson.